Um, just wanted to kind of express some of my thoughts around 6G, what that might look like, and, and how it parallels uh, some interesting things with the Linux kernel. So 5G is an amazing technology. Uh, they took 4G, they expanded it, they made everything configurable. Uh, I think it's the ultimate software-defined waveform. It can be molded and shaped to fit pretty much any wireless use case. I'm not going to pretend to know what 6G is going to look like, but I expect that it's going to build on top of the flexibility of that 5G waveform. The Linux kernel is one of the most successful open source software projects in the world. Started in 1991, it runs to more than 29 million lines of code, and it's been deployed on billions of devices from smartphones to supercomputers. It unlocked incredible innovation and transformed the accessibility, transparency, and security of operating systems worldwide. As the name suggests, the kernel sits at the heart of the system. It's the most important part, and everything else depends on it and builds upon it. The RAN stack is the kernel of 5G and future G. And by the RAN stack, I mean the CU and DU that sits between the radio interface and the core network interface. Everything else relies on it and builds upon it. It's the most important software part of the system. It's also the most complex. The 5G basic specs run to more than 2,500 pages over more than 16 documents. And if you've ever taken a look, it's not exactly a light read. RAN stacks in production are typically highly proprietary. They often depend on specific hardware. Um, and it's very hard for innovators to get their hands on it and to build upon it. I firmly believe that in the same way the Linux kernel transformed computer operating systems, an open source RAN kernel can transform wireless communication systems. I believe an open source RAN kernel will address the issues of supply chain security while reducing costs by eliminating an awful lot of the huge inefficiencies we're seeing in integration, testing, and validation of solutions these days. It'll be a game changer for workforce development. At SRS, we've been building open source RAN for a decade. By open source, I mean releasing software under an OSI-approved uh, open source license. And by RAN, I mean everything from the uh, radio interface to the core network interface. Anyone today can right now download our code, plug in a radio, and connect the handset in their pocket. We've publicly released over 2 million lines of code across our 4G and 5G code bases. And we've always had the aim of producing the most performant yet user-friendly um, and well-written RAN code out there. We have thousands of active users across our code repositories, across our documentation, across our uh, discussion forums. But commercially, our software has enabled incredible innovation as well. So we've worked with SmartSky Networks to deploy an air-to-ground network for private jets coast to coast across the continental US. That's been live since October 2021 and consists of more than 700 instances of our software RAN stack running in all the ground stations on that live production network. With ASD Space Mobile, we developed groundbreaking IP to be able to deliver mobile broadband direct to handset devices, unmodified, from low Earth orbit. And we're demonstrating that today with the largest communication satellite ever deployed in low Earth orbit. Our software has been deployed on drones for search and rescue. It's been deployed in fas secure facilities for wireless threat detection. Um, it's been deployed for passive cell sniffing, for um, what else? The list goes on. It's endless. There's a huge number of commercial deployments that feature our software for all of these really interesting use cases. And this is real innovation. This is taking an idea from concept all the way to a product in the real world. And that real world deployment is absolutely critical because paying customers will demand performance and real deployments will test all of the corner cases for your software and that's how your software matures. So from our decade of experience, what do I think are the ingredients that are needed for a successful open source RAN kernel? I think there are four. It needs to be open, complete, performant and deployed. 
So by open, it mean, I mean it needs to be uh, publicly available under an OSI approved open source license, but not just that, it also needs to be accessible. People need to be able to read it. It needs to be well structured, well documented. By complete, I mean it needs to be self-contained. It can't have any major third party dependencies. It has to be uh, portable across architectures. It can't be tied to a particular brand or type of hardware and it has to be scalable from small to large architectures. By performance, I mean it has to be stable, efficient, and compliant with specifications. And finally, by deployed, I mean it has to be deployed in production by consumers who depend upon it. Because those dependent consumers ultimately are the ones who are going to invest in and sustain that project, and that's absolutely critical. So at, at SRS, we've built um, we've spent probably the fast, last four years and we've invested millions of dollars in um, the vision of a open source RAN kernel. We're at the point now where we need partners to help us to truly achieve that vision of the kernel for RAN and to invest with us. And the time for that investment is now. Thanks very much for your time.